In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform the Littles Missing Completely at Random Test, or MCAR test. Now this test is used to try and determine if data that is missing from a data set is missing at random or is missing in a systematic way. Now the reason we do this test is to determine what type of method we may use to replace that missing data because different methods depend on whether or not the data is missing randomly or whether it's missing non-randomly. I have separate videos that demonstrate two different types of replacement techniques. One expectation maximization technique which is typically done when data is missing at random and then the multiple imputation using logistic regression method is used when we have data that's either missing at random or not missing non-randomly or systematically. So you can view those two videos for further details on how to do the actual replacement of the missing values. But this technique, this test I'm going to demonstrate, is a preliminary test that we do to try and determine if the data is missing randomly or non-randomly. What we have here is survey data uh, with multiple questions that are both numeric and categorical types of outcomes. And so we have several missing values in this data, so we need to determine before we try and replace the data if it's missing randomly or non-randomly. So in order to do the analysis, we go to the Analyze menu, and we go to the Missing Value Analysis. And then what we need to do is move the variables over into the right-hand boxes that we want to analyze for the missing data. And so if we have a categorical outcome like sex, we need to move that into the Categorical Variables box. If we have numeric outcomes like age or family income or high school GPA, we can move that into the Quantitative Variables box. So you'll need to have an idea of what type of outcome it is, whether it's categorical or quantitative. The next thing we need to do is click the button that's labeled EM. And again, in another video, I'll demonstrate how to actually do the expectation maximization technique to replace missing data. But as far as evaluating whether or not it's missing randomly, this is all we need to do at this point. And then we can go ahead and click OK. Now, one thing we can see in the output is, first of all, the table. This first table will give us an idea of how much data is missing from each of our variables. So age has a little more than 5% missing, and the other three variables all have somewhere between 45 and 5% of the missing of missing data. Now the the table we want to look at that's going to give us an indication of whether or not the data is missing randomly is right underneath the EM means table. And you can see this small footnote here labeled Little's MCAR test. Now what we're doing here is testing the null hypothesis that our data that's missing is missing randomly. So if we have a p-value greater than 0.05, which in this case we do, we have a p-value of 0.717, we can accept that null hypothesis and conclude that our data is missing randomly, which is what we typically want to see. We'd like it to be missing randomly because it's much easier to deal with. Now, if this p-value is greater than, or I'm sorry, less than 0.05, then that would indicate that we would have to reject the null hypothesis, and that would mean that our data is not missing at random, that there's some sort of a systematic bias in the data. So there could be certain questions that re the respondents are not answering because they're sensitive or for some other reason that could introduce some bias into our sample. So in this case, we would be able to conclude that our data is missing randomly. And so if we'd like to replace that data, we now have certain options that are appropriate for replacing data in this situation. So to summarize, we learned the Littles MCAR test, which is going to help us determine if data that is missing is missing randomly or non-randomly, and then this will help guide us into what sort of data replacement technique we may use. So hopefully you've learned something from this video, and you can use this video in your own research.